Hi there, uh, welcome back um, to our Facebook videos. Um, we are continuing our Thrive series of videos. This is our third one. Um, my name's Lizzie and we've also got Mary with us today. <laughs> um, so we're going to continue our theme of time, the first topic in Thrive, um, and we're actually going to continue talking about turning points, which we introduced last week. Um, so just to recap quickly, um, we talked about turning points, which are um, when you reach a decision to make a change or accept a situation. Um, so these can be completely different for everybody. Um, and just to give you a bit of an example, um, so turning points can be uh, intentional changes that we make, such as um, changing jobs, moving house, um, a relationship change, things like that. Um, or there can be unintentional. So um, a change might come about from something that somebody has said, um, something you've read um, or, or a change in mindset. Um, and all of these things are catalysts for change or acceptance. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more today about how turning points happen um, and also focus on our positive qualities and characteristics that we have um, to make a turning point happen. So these positive qualities are all completely unique to us um, and we thought we would share um, some of our experiences today um, and highlight some of the positive characteristics we've noticed in ourselves within those turning points um, and hopefully this will help you to identify some in yourselves and to enable some turning points to take place. Um, so Mary did you want to start off with sharing um, one of your experiences with us? Sure, I'll share with you um, about a turning point that I had. So when I had my little boy, um, he was my first and only one. Um, he wasn't a sleeper. He did not like sleeping at all when he was born. I know none of them do when they're first born, but it's carried on for quite some time. Um, and everyone has a different thing that you said, they say you should try, try and help them sleep. And I tried all these things. None of these things were working. And um, he still wasn't sleeping, you know, very little in the night. And I felt myself getting more and more frustrated, of course, more and more tired. Um, I was affecting my sleep even when he was sleeping. I was awake and stressing about it. And you start to feel down then and you start to feel um, like you're not doing a very good job really as a mum. So it did start to um, affect me. And my turning point within that was sort of realising, I think, that this can't continue, that this, this isn't uh, working, this way of dealing with it. And... Um, I knew that I needed to do something about it, make a change. But for me, it was about accepting the fact that he just wasn't a sleeper, that um, probably anything that anyone that suggested wasn't going to help him to sleep. So he was just the way he is. I needed to just roll with it, really. Um, and so that's what I did. And it worked. It, it, he, he didn't sleep. He still didn't sleep um, for quite some time. But I slept a lot more because I wasn't stressing about it. So I was able to sleep um, and not look at the clock about when he but always woke up again. I just slept through um, you know, in between those times and felt a lot better for it, really. Um, so and I think those qualities, just thinking about the qualities within myself that enabled that to happen, um, was recognising that if something wasn't working, this, this situation couldn't continue. Um, and for me, I suppose there was um, self-belief that and confidence that I could um, decide to not listen to others and to make my own decision that was right for me at that time. Yeah, uh, yeah. so that was my quality. Okay, so Mary, it sounds like you really, um, you, you really embraced uh, that kind of accepting of a situation rather than trying to change something that, that, that wasn't changing. And, and that was your turning point, that, that acceptance. And then that then had a, a real impact on your, your well-being. Um, and I think often with with turning points, um, we can't always control the events that go on around us. But what we can control or, or make some headway um, towards controlling is how we how we react to them, how we feel about them, how we think about them. Um, and it sounds like having that self-belief, having that confidence, um, that was so much more important to you than um you know listening to other people you know people's advice that that wasn't helpful for you so um yeah that's that's a really good example of that kind of acceptance being a turning point 
Um, I guess I wanted to share one of mine as well, which is a little bit different to Mary's. Um, so for me, a big turning point in my life was when I, I moved. So I was living in London um, and I moved from London to uh, here in Mid Wales. So a big, a big lifestyle change for me. Um, and I found that, um, you know, I wasn't happy where I was living before. It was very busy. It was very stressful. My job I'd fallen out of love with. Um, I lived in a, in a tiny flat. Um, the things that I enjoyed, you know, being out in the countryside, I, you know, it wasn't a part of my life. And I just got to the point, my, you know, I reached the turning point where I thought I'd like to change this. And that was that was very scary. Um, it's, you know, some people around me kind of made me question it and doubt it. And, and a bit like you, Mary, I just kind of had to go with that self-belief and that confidence that, no, this this is right for me. Um, and I did it and it was great and um, haven't looked back. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just feel like I used that opportunity of that change to then um, change other parts of my lifestyle as well. So yeah, um, you know just embracing the the outside world and and um really identifying who my support network is and identifying what's important to me so things like having a quieter slower pace of life um so i feel like there was kind of turning points within that turning point that 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 geographical move um then helped me to to change them things in my in my lifestyle that then um had an effect on my well-being as well Oh, well, it, um, it isn't easy sometimes to um, go against what other people are saying that you should do and, you know, to double check that what you want is what you want and, and to make those uh, difficult decisions. And, you know, it doesn't always work out, but we're, you know, in both our situations, it did. So, um, yeah, well done. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess um, through us sharing our experiences, we really wanted to encourage um, you guys who are watching this to think of your own personal qualities um, that might enable a turning point to happen. So I, I guess we've shared some of ours in terms of um, having that self-belief, um, having confidence, um, sometimes not listening to others. But I guess some other examples just to get you thinking about it might be um, might be actually listening to others and, and seeking support from people around you um it could be tuning into knowing when you might need help um and then next next step on from that is actually then asking for for support or help or accepting support and help um another quality could be um sharing your your thoughts with somebody else um or even something like taking a very small step um to make to make a tiny change um determination that kind of thing so um we kind of wanted to just uh, get you to start to think about those, those strengths and those qualities and those those characteristics that are there within within all of us. Uh, knowing your qualities, knowing how you tend to respond in difficult and stressful situations um, can really help you to deal um, with them better. Um, it's taken me a long time to learn that um, how I respond to things is not how I want to respond to things, how I actually respond is quite different. Um, <laughs> I have learned that uh, I can make, like in my example, I can make the decisions to, I can recognize that I need to change and I can um, uh, be confident enough in myself to know what I want. Um, but I do also know that my um, where I struggle is accepting help. I'm a bit rubbish at that, my own detriment, absolutely. And I've over the years learned that, that that is how I respond to situations. And it's also helped me to um, be better at responding to stressful things. Like I know though that if people are offering help, then I should accept it because that's just me being stubborn and silly. <laughs> I need to do that. Um, so yeah, it really can help if you know how you respond, it can really help you to respond better and to work on those things. Yeah, so it sounds like, um through knowing what our strengths are and also our our weaknesses the things that we are we're not so good at and we want to improve on um that can take a level of self awareness to really to really work out what what our qualities are um and, and what those things are that we like to work on um and i think this this self awareness comes with time and with practice and taking that time to to reflect on um situations you've been in before reflect on past turning points 
um, to really increase that self-awareness, recognize what those qualities are um, in order to, if and when there's another turning point in your life, um, to, to embrace those strengths. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was feeling that feeling of being stuck, um, which often comes before a turning point. And that's a completely natural response um, to feel stuck in, in, in a situation or in a certain point in your life. Um, and just to remind you that that's a very natural response. And then often recognizing, again, linking it to that reflection and self-awareness I've just talked about, recognizing uh, being stuck can then um, can then be followed by this, this turning point, this change or acceptance. Absolutely. Um, uh, important thing. I think sometimes um, being stuck can be like shutting down and sometimes that's what we need to do for a while. If we've been through something really traumatic, we need that bit of time just to, um, to shut down, to protect ourselves and just sit for a little while and that's okay. Um, it's when we're ready and there's no right or wrongs with this, there's no time frames, there's no um, limits or when you have to act, it's, it's when well, it's right for you. And stuckness is absolutely a natural response. Um, and I think that you can think of um, symptoms of poor mental health sometimes in that same way, in that same frame. Um, that, for example, in my situation, I wasn't sleeping so well, I was starting to get down and frustrated. You know, those symptoms that I'm, my mental health is starting to struggle are a very natural response to a difficult situation and what was happening mm -hmm. to me. And I think it can really help us to think of some of those symptoms of poor mental health as often nat very natural responses to difficult things. Yeah, absolutely, Mary. Um, so we hope uh, you found this, this helpful, this kind of further conversation around turning points. Um, what we hope that you've got out of it is um, for, to get you thinking about those positive characteristics um, that enable the turning point to happen. And um, we'd love to hear um, about those those thoughts that you've had and, and what characteristics and qualities you've you've pinpointed. Um, we do have a Facebook. We have a Facebook page and we also have a Facebook group, um, which is called Mid and North Powers Mind Wellbeing Group. Um, we'd love for you to to join that group and, and perhaps share some of your the thoughts that you've had while watching our videos um, and if it's kind of um, yeah got you thinking about some of the things we've talked about today. Lovely. Uh, so you join us we're going to be uh, talking a bit more about time and in particular on uh, how difficult life experiences the difficult things that we go through um, and how um, they are uh, so, so very linked to poor mental health. So do join us then. And thank you for uh, listening today. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.